This is Grant checking in. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today on something that's been on top of my mind and with my coaching clients, I have found this is consistent with them. This week alone, I've had two one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations and this has been a big one, delegating to employees. Now, in the early days, you know, with the Discord and with the Patreon, we're doing multiple streams of income. And if you've seen my one video, you know that we do have multiple streams of income from uh, real estate, from partnerships, from crypto, from stock investments. We're going to be really focusing on real estate over the long term. But the thing I noted is that our main thing and our mission with State of the Spark, our mission is igniting lives of explosive significance. We have a website company and a billing solution company and a training company. Any of those companies could change. We would still be finding a way to accomplish the mission. And the mission is how we anchor ourselves in this lifetime for fulfilling work. And then anything we do, we try to make sure it's attached to that. But sometimes your business is just a business. And we often kind of wish that we had simply started businesses that weren't attached to the brand at all, that weren't attached to mission. And they were a lot less attached to our reputation and brand because we could be more direct. And the, the, the area this always comes up is in the area of delegating to employees. So in the early days of our business, you can just grind and hustle and side hustle. But at some point, the purpose of the business is time, financial and mental freedom to pursue your bliss and to find what fulfills you and how you want to contribute to the planet long before you turn into a retiree. And this is, I think, the appeal of the, the recent FIRE movement. And that's like a financial movement to retire early. But the side hustle movement, this is why a lot of people love affiliate marketing and hype marketing, basically doing uh, referral links and stuff like that and building up followings. A lot of the young generation has figured this out. But for those of you who do have a real business, a business with employees, it can be very leveraged. And there's a lot of clout that comes with that. There's a lot of income that can come with that, especially if you have a good up product or service. But the challenge, as always, is delegating. Even if you have a side hustle like affiliate marketing, if you become successful, you don't have to plan if you fail. You have to plan if you succeed. And in becoming successful, you will inevitably be delegating. You could be delegating to an outsourced company, and then you just hire or fire if they perform or don't perform. But if you end up with employees that you're in relationship and a rapport with, this is a big challenge. And I want to give you two quick things that we do, um, actually three uh, that we do. And I'd like to add this as a download to the patron. So let me know if you want more things like this. The three things we do. Number one, quarterly alignments. I've heard it said that um, the pace at which you pulse is the pace at which you grow. And the idea behind that is if you do weekly check-ins, you'll grow weekly. If you do quarterly check-ins, you'll only grow quarterly. And honestly, I want to move faster. In a remote working world, we see each other's faces through Zoom or through video calls all the time. And I don't, I, I have yet to unlock a really great way in a remote working world to really get higher productivity or at least, you know, great productivity out of a team. And sometimes it's just in the hiring. But I find that at minimum, at minimum, you need to be doing quarterly one-on-ones. And the reason I'm going to focus on quarterly is in most of my coaching, most of my coaching clients don't even do that. They just have what they call micro moments or the one-minute manager from Kevin Blanchard. They always refer, well, I always have these one-minute coachings. A quarterly one-on-one -on -one is, is the ability for you to pull out there. We, we've talked about priority pyramids as a download tool. Scroll through the Patreon. We've got those available for you to download and make your own. There's like a Google Drive link you can use and kind of create your own. You can pull out the priority pyramid, you can pull out the job description, and you can pull out their KPIs that they performed on and ask, how did we do? And then you can actually say, hey, listen, your performance is underperforming and I don't for this role. You can always make it about the role too. And we could talk about nuance of that later. We're stumbling on the language that we're using that we're not making about this. Hey, you suck. Get out of here. We're not making it about that. We're actually making it about this role requires X and you're not delivering that. So is this role not right for you? Do we need to reconfigure this? Um, what do we need to do to either help you fulfill the, this role if you want to continue doing this role or to find another way for you to contribute or to help you find something else elsewhere uh, that may no longer fit this role. Those conversations are always difficult, but you can't have them at all. If you're doing the one minute manager method, we've tried that, it doesn't work and suddenly you show up 
And if you do need to fire someone in those scenarios, it just turns into a big, ugly, explosive, hey, you don't need to be here anymore. You're out of here. Well, as Spark citizens, we don't want to treat people like that. Um, sometimes, again, if you have outsourced companies, that can make it really easy. And I think a lot of young people are gravitating towards things like MLM again, affiliate marketing, link-based marketing, because they don't have to deal with these employee issues. And there's an advantage to that. But if you can unlock the skill of managing people, you can be head and shoulders above the rest. So, so first off, the first tool is this. I recommend that even if you don't have any tools, creating a quarterly one-on-one -on -one schedule time out of the office or remote. We do one that I'll share with you in a second, but schedule it and let them talk first and just ask a few series of questions. So here, so that leads me to the second tool I want to give you real quick, and that is how we're doing it. And I want to share my screen and show this to you because I think you're going to get a lot out of this. Uh, let me pull this up. So over here, this is ClickUp. And we love ClickUp because ClickUp does a series of automations. And you can see this little, this little doohickey over here. This actually renews on the 25th at the end of every quarter on March 25th, April, May, June, June 25th. You get it. On the 25th, it loads this card or this task and it assigns it to the employee and it asks them a series of questions. First and foremost, I put it on the employee to schedule our time together. So that's there. And if they don't do that, I mean, I get notified of this as well. But if they don't do that, then I will follow up and say, hey, why don't we schedule some time? And then I say, prepare ahead. And then I have these questions. Uh, post possible times in the comments at the right, and then assign the comments to Grant when you've answered these questions. What are your goals and what were your goals and KPIs? So there's this review and reflect moment for that quarter. And you can steal this. I can put this into a PDF for you just to download as a cue sheet and just bring up. Um, there's another sheet for people that are managers, not just employees, called the Rockefeller Habits, which I'll share with you, which I really like. But what were your goals, KPIs, and big rocks? You know, your goals for this, this is often learning goals, maturity goals. Uh, and if they can't recite them, then you didn't keep up with them as a manager throughout the quarter. You didn't keep reiterating it. You didn't have it in front of them onto their computer. You didn't have it in your ClickUp. What were your KPIs? Well, they should be reporting on their KPIs every day in the huddle. And a huddle should be quick. Ours is a little longer. But your daily huddle and then your Thursday huddle, your weekly huddle, which we recommend you do, that works on the business, not in the business. You don't have to report your KPIs then, but you're reporting on your KPIs Four days a week, they should know those off the top of their head. How did you do? And then your big rocks. These were like uh, extended yes or no projects. Did you reach all the clients? Did you update all the websites? Did you uh, you know, do X, Y, and Z? These aren't KPIs. Did you hit all your sales goals? That's probably a KPI. That's probably not what a big rock is. A big rock was some other project that contributed to the overall business. What was your biggest win? Your biggest challenge? Your biggest failure? How did you grow technically? How did you grow professionally? Do you feel that we are closer to our overall goal? And why do you feel that? For next quarter, what goals, KPIs, or big rocks will carry over? What is your top goal? How do you want to grow technically? How do you want to grow professionally? Uh, and how can Spark Sites serve clients better, serve each other better, improve our offerings, and improve our team culture? This sets the tone right here for a positive culture. This sets the tone for them being part of the process of setting their own KPIs, setting their own big rocks. So this tool we have found is absolutely phenomenal. Let me actually just uh, turn that off there. We love this tool and, and we like it in ClickUp, but it doesn't have to be in ClickUp. This could be a PDF. This could be a Microsoft Word document. This would be a Google document, would be a great Google document. But I encourage you to have a different one for each quarter because as you do the review from this quarter, you can always review your intentions from the last quarter. And that sets a milestone for you to ask, hey, listen, we set these goals. Why are we off? And that will determine whether or not you actually need to move closer to monthly check-ins. And so if the first thing is you've got to do quarterly one-on-one, just put it on the calendar right now with your key employees that are your direct reports, people that directly report to you. Then the second thing to do is to get this sheet, download the sheet. I'll actually put this in the Patreon as a download. Just give that, gift that to you guys. And we'll do it as a Google sheet so you can duplicate it and rip it and make it your own. You deserve that. I'll give that to you. Um, but then the third thing is this, and this is the third thing I want you to think about. I want you to consider going to bi-weekly check-ins. Now, they won't be this full list. If you're doing this on the quarterly, 
you should do something close to this bi-weekly. And this is what we've begun to do. And this is us trying to troubleshoot a remote working world. You see, we've got one employee that we're trying to get up to the next level. And thinking about this employee made me think about all of my employees and realizing in a completely remote working world, we don't have all the micro moments we really need. So we created mugs and meat. We, uh, we have coffee and we do Google Meet. And I just start with asking, how are you? How are things going? What are your challenges? And I listen. I make sure I listen. It's only about a half an hour long, but I'm telling you for a half an hour every two weeks for you to get realigned with your employee and then have a moment to say, I don't know if this is a fit for you right now. Well, the role needs X and we just don't see that happening. And what's going on? Uh, you know, what are some of the resistances? Can we bring more training? Can we bring more tools? Or do we need to find another place for you in the organization? Or do we need to find another place for you out of the organization uh, and help you make that transition? It allows you to be empathetic. It allows you to connect, give them every opportunity. But here's the thing. We've had employees in the past that stayed with us a year and a half too long. They had a bad attitude. I would meet with them all the time. In fact, pace of meeting wasn't the problem. I didn't have the language necessary to say, listen, we've asked these questions, but unemotionally, we need to move you out. I heard someone say recently, bad employees will never quit. And I said, why is that? They said, bad employees will never quit because a bad employee thinks that they've worked the system. They think they've manipulated you. And if you are too friendly and too kind, which we always err on at State of the Spark. We always believe we can co-elevate people, but we've got to have a mechanism to give everyone an opportunity sooner than later to modify your team to achieve the goals. Because listen, if I keep subjecting the mission of State of the Spark, igniting lives of explosive significance, if I keep subjecting that to our lowest common denominator, our lowest performer, it's going to be horrible. But if I have a reputation for just blowing people up and firing them immediately, that also ruins the mission. So I don't want to ruin the mission. I want to take things to the next level. I want to be a great employer, but I also want to make sure that I'm helping people realize whether or not they're a fit or whether or not they're performing well to give them an opportunity to elevate themselves, to step up to the plate or to move on. Now, I know in this video, this sounds clean, but this really weighs on my heart and it really is not easy to do. So several quick summary. Number one, do a quarterly one-on-one. -on -one. Schedule it right now. It's, it's at the turn of a quarter right now. It's a little, it's a few weeks into the quarter. No problem. Get it on the calendar. Follow it with your employees and say, hey, I want to set this intentionality of meeting with you quarterly. The first thing you do is set next quarter's meeting now. Get it on the calendar now. But in this meeting, ask these questions. You can rip these questions. Again, I'll post them for you. You can just copy and paste them. You can copy the Google Drive link or download the PDF. And then the next thing you need to decide is, do I need to meet more frequently than quarterly? Maybe just go to monthly if biweekly is too much. Or if you're trying to get an aggressive growth, you need to meet weekly. It's called the mastermind. And that weekly thing needs to hum in a one-on-one. -on -one. Now we have a weekly team meeting on Thursdays. We can cover that later. We basically work on the business with uh, ways to 1% improve the company. We meet daily on the huddle and that's just alignment. Huddle should be quick and easy. How are you doing? What's up? Where are you stuck? What's going on? And it is a huge way to pulse in the company and make sure we're staying on top of things. But I hope this is helpful. Quarterly meetings, use this outline. Uh, and then decide if you need to meet sooner than quarterly. The other thing I would say is this, ClickUp is huge for this. Now, I'm wondering if we're depending on it too much because I'm do, I am noticing that a lot gets lost because there's so many automations and so much going on. Some of these HR things, I'm wondering if the HR things are getting lost. I'll report back on that to you. But um, for now, do those three things, quarterly one-on-ones, ask these questions, set the tone, but then uh, decide if you need to meet more frequently than quarterly, but also continue to hone a language that's empathetic, sympathetic, but allows someone a door out if they need that doorway out. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please refer a friend, add someone. If you're part of the Patreon, which is probably true if you're watching this, then by all means, share it with a friend, get it going. We have a few spots available left and we're always trying to fill that up uh, and serve people and accomplish our mission of igniting lives of explosive significance. You're a part of that. So thank you so much and have a great day.